In this lesson, we'll be creating soft jaw geometry. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use break link to bring features into a distributed design, create a projected sketch, and use extrude to remove material. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's create some geometry in our soft jaws so that way we can hold our link part. Notice that even though we grounded the soft draw components, that they're still free to move about. This is because this is not a single component, but a group of components. In order to make sure that they stay put, we need to find one of the components to ground and ensure that the rest of them have joints to hold them in place. So once we ground the subplate, notice that now they're staying in place. Also keep in mind with this chain link icon that if the files are linked externally and we go to export them, there'll be an F3Z file and all the files that are contained within the distributed design will have to be in that archive. We can also right click and select break link to bring all of the files and information into this current design. Once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and save the file. Then I want to work on the soft jaws. I'm going to expand the soft jaw fixture and note that we have a rear soft jaw and a front soft jaw. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and hide the base, the subplate, the 45800, and I'm going to keep the rear and front jaws as well as the rear soft jaw and front soft jaw. If we take a look at these designs from underneath, you'll notice that these are simply just blocks. They haven't had the holes or the bottoms drilled and tapped yet, so we still have a lot of work to do in order to get them ready. But I want to get started by focusing on one, in this case, the front soft jaw. I'm going to activate it. Then I want to create a sketch on the top plane. And what I'm looking to do is bring in the geometry from my link. So using P on the keyboard, I'm going to project the top face and say OK. Then I'm going to double click on the inside edge and delete it because all I really need is the external geometry. Also note that when we're creating a soft jaw, we need to be careful with the geometry that we're creating and replicating. And the reason I say that is because we need to ensure that we have enough room to make sure that our part fits if there's any change in tolerance or if there are any problems. So with this specific design, there are a few different ways that we can hold it. We have this internal pocket that we created, and we also have four tapped holes. So we could actually bolt this down to a fixture plate rather than having it held in soft jaws. Now, this would still require us to create some sort of fixture, so it really just depends on what your specific setup is and your type of geometry. What I want to do is create these soft jaws using some basic shapes. So from this position, which is the center point of this mount, I'm going to draw a vertical line down. Then I'm going to hit the green check mark, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then hit escape. What I want to do is I want to make these coincident with the outside edge. And now if we take a look at the different profiles that we have on our sketch, this is the area that I want to keep. This is the area I want to use to hold my part. The rest of the information, such as around the side here and these areas on the inside, that's all stuff that I want to get rid of. So what I want to do now is use extrude, and I'm going to select all of the regions I want to get rid of. And then I'm going to start dragging them down because I'm going to do an extrude cut. We need to select the objects that we want to cut. We don't want to remove anything from the link. And when we look at the distance that we want to go, we can select to object, and then we can select the bottom face of our link. When we do that, it'll use the bottom face of the link as a reference, and this is exactly what we need in terms of the soft jaw geometry. So we're only cutting away from the soft jaw, and then we're going to select OK. Also note that in Fusion 360, we can actually use that cut to remove through multiple bodies at the same time. So using the same cut, we could add a bit more geometry and cut it from the other soft jaw as well. So let's take a look at this 
and edit the sketch and come back in using my line tool and go from this point vertically. And then I'm going to add another line over here from this point vertically as well. And then I'm going to grab this upper face and hit P to project and say OK. Because we didn't grab a face as a sketch plane on this side, we'll have to project the face as a reference or finish off the contours manually. Now once we finish the sketch, if we go back to our extrude and select edit, we can now grab additional regions to extrude. And then in our objects to cut, we can add in our rear soft jaw as well. So now we've removed that information from both soft jaws. And again, we need to be mindful of tolerances and ensure that we have enough clearance to hold everything. When we're looking at the design of this soft jaw, we have two flat sides that are going to be used to hold our part in. Then we also have these angled faces that are going to be used to help locate it. The radii in the corner are areas in which we don't necessarily need to have that specific geometry. If we hide our link and we focus our attention just on the soft jaw, if the radii gets cut a little bit bigger or smaller on the link, it could affect its ability to be held in the soft jaw. So if we want to account for this, we can reduce the fillet radius on this corner so that way when we're looking at it in relation to the link itself, as long as the link radii doesn't get cut to be quite a bit smaller, then we can still account for it. And because it's an external fillet, it'll be easy for us to machine even if it's a square corner. So let's hide the link and let's use press pull and select both of these fillets. And I'm going to look at them from a top down view and I'm going to bring my link back. So if I start to drag this away, notice that it's moving the entire face. So what's happening is it's modifying that entire edge, even though I have a new offset chosen. Instead of doing this as an option, what we could do is select each face and hit delete, which brings it back to square. Then we can go back and we can apply a fillet to those corners. If We rotate this around. We can then come in and drag this back to a larger amount as long as we have some sort of flat face here to help us locate the part. So right now I'm going to make that radius value of one inch. And if we take a look at the link, the radius value on the link can be measured. And this is going to be a half inch radius. So again, if we view this looking top down, you can see now we don't have a radii that matches between the two. But we still have our flat spot here, and then we have our points on the left and right to help us locate. We need to repeat the process on the other side for the rear soft jaw. So in order to do that, I'm going to activate it and hide my link. Then we'll come in and delete these and apply a fillet. Also keep in mind in Fusion 360 that we can apply fillets to different solid bodies and different components. The main reason that we want to do this by activating this component is so that it's included inside of this feature and that when we activate our component, the timeline at the bottom shows only the features for that component. So if I bring my link back and I activate the entire file, looking at it, you can see again that we've got those flat spots that help us locate the link. And then we've increased the radius of these fillets, so that way we don't have to worry about them exactly matching. Whenever we're doing this, we want to look for three points of contact on this specific design, and we want to limit any issues we might potentially have if there's a tolerance problem. We're not quite done with these yet. We might need to do a little bit more work. You can see when we hide the rear jaw and the front jaw that we do have some geometry that's cut out of the bottom. And if we bring the front jaw back but hide the soft jaw and rotate this around, you can see that we do have some hardware and some alignment features in here. So we need to make sure that all the corners are chamfered or filleted if we need to. 
and we need to identify any of the attachment points if we need to make any adjustments or modifications there. So for right now, let's go ahead and bring back all the bodies and components inside of our soft jaw. We're going to navigate back to a home view, and I'm going to save my file before moving on to the next step.